Well, hi everyone. On June 8th, Saturday, 2024, there was a massive, what the media is calling a landslide, but in actuality is a failure of a highway fill embankment in Wyoming. This was on Highway 22, also called the Teton Pass Highway between Jackson and Wilson, Wyoming. Highway 22 continues off to the west into Idaho. A lot of people who are service-related workers in the Jackson area commute from Idaho because the Jackson area is extremely high cost. And we see this in many places that are touristy or have really run up in real estate value that the people supporting the local community live somewhere else. So they've got an extra hour commute roughly to deal with this situation. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over what actions were taken by Wyoming DOT, why I think this massive embankment for the highway failed and what they need to do about it. So towards the end of last week, the highway department noticed that there were some cracks opening up in the roadway. These cracks were described as being approximately eight inches wide. And then there was a lowered section of the roadway on the downhill side of the slope. Now, if you haven't been out to this part of the country, it's absolutely beautiful. The Tetons rise right up out of the valley floor with no foothills. I was out there in the early 90s on a motorcycle trip and it's just absolutely spectacular. So I can understand why a lot of people like to live and, and visit this area, but this is gonna result in a road closure, I think of probably a year and I'm going to explain why in this video. So Wyoming DOT released this video. They called it the Big Fill Slide. And you can see why here. This looks like a silty clay that was used to construct a highway embankment. It's, it looks very steep to me. Uh, the, the side slopes look to be about two horizontal on one vertical, which is quite steep. Uh, I've walked two to one slopes for other embankments and it's really hard to traverse. It's that steep. So you can see off to the uphill side, looks like they were doing some grading work. It's my understanding that they were attempting to create a, a bypass or a shoe fly to continue roadway traffic across this area while they were concerned about this section of roadway before it actually failed. Now you can see here the guardrail at the bottom of the slope. You can also see the posts that were used to secure the guardrail to the embankment. It's rather dramatic, quite a large section. Actually reminds me of a video I did about a month or so ago about an embankment failure for a highway in China that resulted in approximately 50 deaths. This happened at night and one vehicle after the other plunged into the massive hole left by the, the slide of the embankment. Of course, I imagine a lot of these vehicles were EVs, so the batteries caught on fire in all likelihood. It was an inferno really. So as I mentioned late last week, they saw evidence of tension cracks forming in the roadway. The top of the picture here is looking down slope. Now here's some camera images along the highway. Usually for these kind of roads, and I'm sure this is no exception, they try to balance as much cut and fill as possible. So they'll excavate soils on the uphill side, soil and rock, and they'll use that material as fill for the embankment section lower down the slope. You can see even the cut slopes are very steep. And it's not surprising that there were a lot of debris flows onto the roadway. In fact, that was the initial cause for closing Highway 22 by Wyoming DOT was because of debris that had flowed onto the roadway, making it impassable. Now I wanna read some statements that were provided on the Wyoming Department of Transportation website. So this is June 7th, Friday. Wyoming State Highway 22 Teton Pass remains closed as of 1 p.m. Now keep in mind this section failed on Saturday, June 8th. Teton Pass remains closed this morning due to a mudslide. The mudslide came down at mile post 15 and crews been working to clear the debris. Due to the continued movement at mile post 12.8, which is where the failure occurred, crews are working on a temporary solution to stabilize the slide area by removing the asphalt on the roadway, 
minimizing the weight on the unstable ground. I hope that was a media person that was using their own interpretation of what they were doing out there because that's utterly ridiculous. I mean, removing a few inches of asphalt isn't going to stabilize a massive slide like this. It says both the ongoing work at milepost 15 and milepost 12.8, Teton Pass will likely remain closed for the rest of the day and night. Crews will be working to open the road within the next day or two, but opening will be dependent on availability of equipment and contractors as well as weather. So you heard it there, they thought they could get this road opened in a couple of days and then it ended up failing on them, the, the massive slide of the embankment. So it appears to me that they really didn't appreciate the risks involved. I think these construction crews were placed at considerable risk and had they managed to construct this shoe fly on the uphill side, by the way, which wouldn't be good uh, in terms of any type of stabilization efforts, particularly if they placed any fill there to level out that area of the shoe fly. It just seems that they were drastically optimistic or simply failed to understand the risks. And here's another statement. Let's talk about the mudslide closing the road. In addition, crews are using the closure to evaluate the temporary patch and movement at milepost 12.8. So they were just trying to get some temporary measures to get this roadway open because it's a very important roadway. But again, I'm shocked that they didn't appear to understand the big picture here. Now let's go over what I think caused this failure. It's been reported that it's been a particularly wet spring, although nothing truly out of the ordinary or, or something that you couldn't expect to happen in a given year. It's just maybe not as common with uh, rain and a lot of snow melt. In fact, that's undoubtedly what was causing these mud flows. I noticed in the cut sections for these highways, the slope was bare. So you're bound to have these type of uh, debris flows unless you've got some kind of covering face with uh, wire mesh and shotcrete or some type of vegetation, although I don't know what kind of vegetation you could have on those very steep slopes in the cut section of the roadway. I'm looking at this and I've worked on projects for highway embankments and I'm more accustomed to having slopes no steeper than about two and a half to one. So two and a half horizontal to one vertical. So if you go out two and a half feet, you're gonna drop in elevation one foot and so on. So I wanted to estimate how big this fill slope was. Most highway roadways have lane widths of 12 feet and a shoulder that's at least seven feet wide. So that would give you an overall roadway width of about 38 feet. Let's just round it up to 40. So I've used this arrow here at the roadway section and I copied that and oriented it in a vertical direction. So you can see that embankment fill slope is at least 120 foot tall. So it's a very sizable embankment section. Now the way they construct these fill slopes is they'll take soil and place it in lifts, typically eight inches thick, and they'll compact it with heavy equipment. Depending on the nature of the material, if it's granular, it's a vibratory smooth drum roller. If it's more cohesive material, they'll use a sheep's foot roller. So I think they're gonna have to focus on not only getting this roadway reopened, but understand the mechanisms of failure. And here's an example of potential shear surfaces through a slope. And to me, it appears that this slide was more or less surficial. If you see this top red line here, it was basically resulting in an oversteepening of the slope. And then of course, such a steep slope wasn't stable. And so other material would slide in in a progressive fashion. And the evidence that suggests to me that it was a relatively shallow shear failure is I don't see a massive pile of material at the toe of the slope. And also the guardrail section and the guardrail posts are well down slope. So it's as if that failed first and moved down slope and then subsequent material failed and, and pushed from behind. If it had been a more massive global stability failure, I would have expected that the guardrail section would have remained higher up the slope. I don't understand how they could look at cracks like this that developed before the embankment failed and think that it was safe to get traffic opened anywhere in its vicinity. Here's an aerial view. You can see the tension cracks that form an arc 
So that's a clear mass of soil that is moving downslope. So the arrow's pointing in the downslope direction. I was at a project where this uh, owner of this property excavated a vertical shaft in soil into an underground opening in, in rock. But they failed to line that excavation in soil. And then there was a bunch of rain and this hole acted like a hole in a funnel and all the soil started raveling in and, and piling into this, this mine at the bottom of the shaft excavation. And it created this huge bowl. And I was asked to go out there and assess the situation. And a scarp, a, a vertical face at the top of the failure surface had formed. And I told everybody, you don't want to be on the downhill side of the scarp. Get well away on the uphill side of the scarp. And again, these failures tend to be progressive. So this appears to be some earthwork where they were moving some material downhill. It appears that they were trying to level things out a little bit. But you could see the edge of the failure surface would have been right next to the edge of the shoe fly section to reopen traffic in the area. The other thing you don't want to do when you're having slope stability problems is to stockpile material on top of your failing slope. And in this case, they've got all this asphalt piled up here, which is quite, quite surprising. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I think this road's gonna be closed for about a year. And uh, I wish that weren't the case, but it looks like they've gotta do some massive reconstruction of these highway embankments, probably at a flatter slope angle than two to one. If they wanna maintain these slopes, and I was looking at this failure surface. I didn't see any evidence of drainage in the slopes, no, no drain pipes. I didn't see any evidence of reinforcement, such as uh, the use of geogrids. Use of geogrids is pretty common when you want to have a steepest slope as possible that wouldn't be stable without such reinforcement. It's commonly used for not only highway embankments, but for embankments for solid waste landfills. It's just a photo of a geogrid being used for highway embankment stabilization. A few years ago, I was involved with a project that was a massive landslide along a highway in North Dakota. And they came in and installed drilled shafts to form a wall. These drilled shafts can overlap, in which case it's called a secant wall, or they could just touch, which is called a tangent wall, or the drilled shafts could be spaced farther apart and have a wall system in between more widely spaced drill shaft elements. So if they don't go with geogrid reinforcement, I think there's gonna be some existing roadway sections that haven't failed yet that most likely will have to be stabilized with uh, drill shafts or something of that nature to provide much more lateral support to these fill slopes. Now I mentioned I was surprised that Wyoming DOT was going down the path of reopening this roadway by constructing a parallel road section right next to the section of embankment that was failing, it seems like they didn't really have a handle on how much slope movement may be occurring. And through this whole section, I think drone-based LIDAR, where you shoot multiple laser beams and you can get very accurate measurements of ground elevation, and if you do it repeatedly over time, you can get indications of very small movements that when plotted out could be indicative of movement of the slopes at various locations. So I think they first need to get a handle on what other areas may be a problem, get those areas stabilized. But because it's already well into June, I imagine the construction season in this area of Wyoming is relatively short, usually probably limited to the construction summer season. So I think there's more work here than they can do in just one summer. So they're not able to place fill under frozen conditions. So I think it's gonna take the rest of this summer and next summer to get these major embankment sections rebuilt, unfortunately. I wanna send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support. I also wanna send a shout out to those of you who have provided super thanks. And of course, those of you who have liked, subscribed, and hit those notification buttons. Check out my digital download in the description I'm going to add some new ones here coming up in the next week or so, so 
be on the lookout for those and for future videos. Thanks very much, everyone.